In this case study, we are going to take a look at how we generated 383,000 for this supplement brand on a 5.22 times ROAS. This case study is divided into three sections. Section number one is where we're going to take a look at the Google Ads account. I'm going to break down some numbers here as well as show you that those are real numbers. Then we are going to take a look at a detailed presentation on how uh, a little bit of a client background, then key implementations we did on the ad account and some highlights of this project. I'm sure this is going to add a lot of interesting information that may be valuable for your marketing team or whoever is running your advertising campaigns for your brand. So without any further let's jump straight into the case study. So as you can see here, uh, we generated 383,000 uh, on Google Ads on a 5.22 times ROAS. Uh, we spent something around 73,000. And as you can see, one thing that's very interesting to mention here is that all the metrics improved from last year. So as you can see here, the cost went down a little bit. So we are spending less. We generated 94,000 more last year compared uh, this year uh, uh, 2022 compared to the previous year from November uh, 30th to no November 30th 2022 the cost per acquisition here was 7.9 so they sell uh, I'm going to show that the specific metrics and the, their AOV in a second but this is a very 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 competitive cost per acquisition for them and finally the ROAS here as you can see um, just mentioning before we decrease the cost per acquisition uh, by two dollars and here we increase the ROAS by 1.49 so all metrics improved overall, overall and one other thing that's very interesting to mention is that if we look at their total um, revenue as you can see here on Google Analytics we generated more than 27 percent of their total revenue just from Google Ads campaigns alone so almost one third of their revenue came from Google Ads alone, a very, very, very good acquisition source for brands out there. Now, uh, as you can see here, their average order value is uh, about $51. So as you can see, very interesting uh, price point. Now let's jump into the actual presentation. Let me break down for you some highlights and exactly what we did for them, the information that can uh, be very valuable for you as well. So how we generated 383,000 with a 5.22 ROAS for a supplement brand. Client background, just giving a brief overview on this client and what they were doing before. They sell natural superfoods and supplements. They are a very niche brand, very specific product they sell. They are doing about 1.3 million in sales per year. Their AOV, as I showed you, is about $51. And the main thing they were facing, that's where, uh, uh, that's, what uh, our initial discussion was all about was they couldn't scale campaigns past a certain point and had a below average had below average non-branded results so that's their main problem they managed to do really good with uh, branded results however the non-branded which is the most important part of your Google Ads strategy was not producing good results so that's our main focus from day one now a few highlights here of the project we as I mentioned, spent 73,000, made back 383,000 for them on a 522% lifetime ROAS. All the metrics improved compared to last year. As you can see, as I showed you before, all the metrics are better now. And this is a, a lot due to what I'm going to show you in the breakdown in a second. Now, interesting information, as I, as I showed before, Google Ads alone drove more than 25% of the brand store revenue. And here's the most interesting part. The non-branded uh, campaigns grew by 11% a, m uh, a month on average. So each month, we had our non-branded campaigns representing more of the total account ratio, which is what most brands are looking for. And now they want to move away from having 70%, 80% of their Google Ads results coming from branded. They want more results from non-branded. So that's exactly what we did for them. Now, here's the exact process we did for them. It's a three-step process. Of course, there's, there's more that goes into developing uh, an ad account uh, throughout one year. However, these are the main points we could see uh, that made a huge impact. 
the first one, first optimization we did was to get the entire account history, analyze all the campaigns they, they previously had once we started working together, take a look at what was working, what was not working, turning off campaigns that were not performing, and so on and so forth. We wanted to have a crystal clear understanding uh, of what was going on before. See what was working properly, pause campaigns, products, and everything necessary for a better understanding. That's point number one, that's crucial, very basic, however, very important. Now, point number two, we started with a more basic and conservative optimizations as the account was already showing good results. So we decided to start with the simplest optimization of all, which is search campaigns optimizations. Branding, DSA, non-branded, and specific search campaigns, also non-branded. So here, what we wanted to do, they already had these campaigns running, however, they were not very optimized. So branding campaigns, very, very simple. We just optimized that campaign. DSA campaign, uh, non-branded, and specific search campaign. Those campaigns are uh, campaigns that pretty much target very specific keywords for very specific purposes. So if we take a look at uh, what we did here, the optimizations for the search campaigns were removing keywords that didn't make sense for the brand and products. Very, very important process. Takes a lot of time, however, it's very, very uh, worth doing. Uh, also, deactivating keywords with no impressions to clean out the, the, the ad account. Also, low ROAS or zero, zero conversion. So we removed all keywords that had no impressions, a low ROAS or zero conversions. Very, very important to do. Tip for deactivating keywords. We usually look at time windows longer than 30 days to reach a conclusion about removing or keeping them running. We don't recommend these optimizations for intervals shorter than 30 days. You always want to make sure you have a lot of data before actually going ahead and uh, removing a keyword or removing uh, a setting that you, you want to have removed because that way you don't have enough data to see if that actually makes sense. Maybe you had a bad month there but this keyword would actually start performing in the next month. A lot can happen, so always have more data. Now, 2.2 uh, here, um, still inside of the optimization uh, um, point here. Beating optimizations, basic adjustments in target CPA and target ROAS for some campaigns, aiming a balance between spending ROAS and volume of conversions. So this is the biggest um, dance you have with your ad account you are always dancing with these metrics here if you want to if you want more volume you're going to have to give up a little bit of ROAS if you want more ROAS you're going to have to give up a little bit of volume or you can uh, optimize other areas of your store for example conversion rate on, on the website uh, AOV and other metrics to improve all these metrics at once. This is the big dance we do here, and that uh, comes down to beating optimizations, increasing budgets, changing desired CPA, changing target ROAS, tar uh, changing target CPA, and so on. So far, as a process that's uh, um, an evergreen process, uh, ever evolving process, I should say. On the DSA campaign, we adjusted the auto-targeting for the categories that were performing the best. Very simple optimization here, very standard for DSA campaigns. Point number three, very, very important, addition of complementary campaigns aiming to decrease the cost per session on the website and bring diversification at the same time time. Very, very, very important point, especially with the rise of the performance max campaigns that we have right now. Reason for that is because uh, uh, back in the day, uh, brands uh, tend to uh, rely a lot on smart shopping. And if you didn't have a proper uh, account structure full of other campaigns to support your account overall and don't rely too much on one specific campaign, uh, most of those brands had issues when uh, the transition happened there to performance max. So we always want to make sure we have multiple campaigns driving results. This came down to, we added two specific PMAX campaigns for product categories with an initial budget of $30 a day. This is uh, just to, to get things started, just to, to understand a little bit better 
uh, about uh, the category, the product, does that make sense to have a specific PMAX for this campaign, does it make sense to have a specific uh, creatives for this campaign, copy for this campaign, and adjusted bidding, observing performance, and scaling vertically. So what we are doing here, we are adjusting bidding, uh, observing how the, this campaign reacted, and then scaling if it made sense, with progressive increases of 2 to $5 each interval of optimization and analysis of results. So what we are doing here, to summarize, we are launching this very specific PMAX campaigns with very specific assets, which I'm going to show to you in a second. And then we are just seeing if it makes sense. If not, we just remove the campaign. If it does, we keep scaling up. Now, for the PMAX, we did a, uh, the bread and butter copy, images, and videos focused on specific products and broader uh, assets for categories and brand. So with PMAX, you always want to have a mix of uh, what you are looking for. You want to be very specific with uh, products, your best sellers, but you also want to have broader assets because the performance max campaign is really, really broad in the way it's built. So you want to make sure you are showing uh, most of your products in the performance max campaigns, very branded related uh, uh, images and videos and copy there. Now, the for the audience signals, which is how you target your performance max campaigns, we, uh, we always start with remarketing lists as this is a very, very, very qualified uh, audience, uh, audience signal. For the consolidation algorithm, one of the best audiences. Then we always test other audience signals that make sense. So we want to start with the most qualified audience signals first, the best possible audiences we have, which is usually remarketing lists, your list of customers, or uh, who visited your website in the last 30 days, or who added something to the cart, for example, um, and so on, so forth. Then from the audience signals, the code ones, we created custom segments of search terms and purchase intention through the audience manager and use it on PMAX. So here's where we are building on top of the performance max, the audience signals, we are discovering what works and then we are pretty much scaling from there, adding more and trying more audience signals to try to find more qualified ones. Finally, we use analytics to look for interest and in market audiences to test as other signals again. Point 3.2, uh, we added one standard shopping campaign in medium priority, aiming to increase the reach on Google Shopping. So that's a very, very, very important implementation you absolutely have to have in place. Your performance max campaign will not give you a lot of data on your products, how they are performing. So having a standard shopping campaign give you, gives you much more control over your uh, products. You can understand your data a lot better and make changes to your product feed that will uh, benefit your performance max campaign as well. We have a full video on this on the YouTube channel. You can take a look afterwards. The goal here is to reinforce shopping exposure alongside PMAX. So we are forcing Google to expose us more to the shopping placement because we want to collect data. Another very important thing about the 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 standard shopping campaign, which I'm going to show to you in a second, is that it gives us keywords to try on search campaigns and other campaigns. A great, as I mentioned, a great advantage of this campaign is the control you have over product and products and categories, not to mention the discovery of new keywords and more detailed view of winning products on Google. So as I mentioned, you want to have these two campaigns running alongside each other, one to be your main performance scaling campaign, which is the PMAX, and one to be your uh, data feeding campaign, which is your uh, standard shopping campaign. So that's it for this case study. I hope the information you found here is valuable. I hope you can implement this uh, information into your Google Ads account to improve results, increase ROAS, improve non-branded results, and ultimately profit more and grow your brand. Also, make sure to check out the first link in the description for our website. If you feel like this is something you need help with, Make sure to book a call with a casual conversation with me personally where we're going to take a look at your ad account. We're going to take a look at areas where we can improve results and from there we can uh, discuss a potential partnership. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.